Time for the only radio show of its kind. Auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, veterans of vintage. It's the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. For the next hour, enjoy great information about buying and selling antiques and collectibles and some interesting stories. Now, the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Welcome to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Thank you for joining us. We are here every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. And I'm Susan. I'm here with Randy Donnelly. And we are the owners of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. We're just 60 miles west of Chicago. And we're here today to help you determine if you have any valuable items at home that you may want to sell at auction. But first, I want to give you a little highlight of what's coming up in this episode. So stay tuned so you can't leave us. you got to stick with us because we're going to talk about... (laughs) The June auction that we just oh, held, Susan. the price is realized. <laughs> um, Mike Donnelly is going to come on and talk to us a little bit about gangster-related memorabilia. So that'll be interesting that, to hear that. That is, you know, we were asking about uh, gangster memorabilia last week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course, people what came call in? us. Yeah. <laughs> what came in? We'll, t- we'll tell you about that coming up. And then Shauna Donnelly is going to come on and give us an update on the Donnelly Group, our new real estate division. We're going to hit up a little bit of some highlights from our July gun and military auction that's coming up on the 15th and 16th. And then we're going to tell you folks some items we're looking for from August to December. So now is the time to consign and we're going to tell you exactly what we're looking for. So stay tuned. Right now, we're going to give you some highlights on our June phonograph and music box auction that we just held and tell you about some record-breaking prices. Hey, Randy, great, you're on. Great idea. I can't wait to share this information. You, you know, it's it's always fun to have a, an auction that just is widely successful, which this one was. Uh, prices were just uh, crazy good. And um, and that's always uh, wonderful to let everybody know that, you know, uh, in antique phonographs and music boxes, you know, prices are are Hold actually and steady. holding, yeah. Yeah, if not um, doing better than we realized. I, I mean, in one uh, particular phonograph, uh, you know, uh, we, we set a record price for uh, uh, a world record price, actually, for what's called a Victor B. It's the famous phonograph with the trademark where you always see the little Victor phonograph and Nipper the dog listening to mm-hmm. it and everything. Uh, I mean, the hammer price on that was $18,000. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, pre auction estimate on it was. Uh, Five to six thousand, I think. Right, and um, and it brought eighteen. Right, so the Victor B went for eighteen thousand. The Class M. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, most people don't realize that. You know, when you're th- talking about an antique phonograph, they always think of a hand crank phonograph. Mm-hmm. When in reality, uh, way back in the eighteen eighties, Thomas Edison didn't first come out with a crank phonograph. Right. It was actually an electric phonograph operated by a battery that he invented to operate it because, of course, nobody had electricity in their homes. But batteries were very dangerous because they required acids. And, and most most people weren't, um, well, they, they weren't scientific, uh, you know, and they, they just couldn't handle batteries. So these early battery phonographs only lasted uh, a year or two back in the 1880s. And they're extremely, extremely rare. Well, of course, we had one, uh, and it's called a Class M, an Ed- Edison Class M. And uh, that machine sold for $15,000. I mean, wow. they normally trade only around 10000 but this right. one brought fifteen. dollars yeah. That's right. And, you know, now is the time to tell everyone these are the kinds of items we're looking for because you just never know at auction how well they're going to sell. So antique phonographs still are selling very well. You know, I got a quick uh, Class M story. <clears throat> a woman once called me and she described this phonograph. She said, uh, we're about to run a conducted house sale. And she said, I have $175 marked on this phonograph. And I just want to uh, know, it, it, do you think that's a good price? And she described it to me. And I said, well, no, no, that's, this is a, <laughs> a very, very rare machine. And she said, well, how would I ever sell that machine? I said, well, we'll sell it for you. Uh, at auction, she said, well, I'm all the way in New Mexico. Well, it tur- and she was in Albuquerque. And it turns out that we had a truck just two hours away from her at the very moment I she calls. That. We were able to pick up this phonograph 
And we ended up selling this phonograph for her back then for eleven thousand oh dollars. And she wanted to know if one hundred and seventy five <laughs> was the right price. Well, I'm no. glad she called us. You got to call us. Smart caller. Yep. Call us at eight one five nine two three seven thousand. Randy will tell you. Sell it at the garage sale, or don't you dare sell it at Donley <laughs> Auctions for sure. But you know, the one item that I just was my favorite at the auction uh, was the auto phone, the twelve cylinder auto phone that. Sold for fourteen thousand. Right. What right. was the estimate on that? You know, I, I'm not sure, Susan, but it, it certainly was was very good money for that machine. I and, think so. And cylinder phonographs actually uh, had multiple cylinders in early years because they were really our first form of jukebox. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're all familiar with even jukeboxes today, coin operated phonographs that are in restaurants and bars all over. Um, but the very first ones played cylinder records. And uh, the, consecutively. So instead of just playing one three or four minute record, it just kept going. Well, that was a home model that we sold. So mm-hmm. th- that's why it kept going. Normally, uh, the early even cylinder machines, you could make selections on them. But on this particular home model, which, again, there's only two of those known. Right. Yeah. That's great. And then, of course, the archives, the lost corporate archives. Give us an update on that. We did mention that several times in the last few weeks. That? Well, you know, they, they brought really good money. I think uh, uh, the the owner was hoping for 3500 and uh, they brought 13000 right. Now, uh, again, the, the fact is now that they're purchased up again, they're, they're going to be you – know, they went back into private hands, so they right. probably won't be available for sale again for maybe another 20 years. That's right. So when, when you see stuff at auction, you have to buy it now because once it's gone – it gets squirreled away in a collection again. That's right. One of the other items I remember from the auction was the Edison signed document. That sold for $5,500. It had Edison's signature on it. So, again, we're always looking for original items like that that uh, have provenance with it. Well, yeah, absolutely. And and yet uh, there's always bargains at an auction, too, because mm-hmm. there was an Alexander Bell uh, signature. And I don't know what the price was, but I remember thinking to myself, wow. Uh, I mean, that's a handwritten letter and signed by Alexander uh, Graham Bell back in the 1880s. That's got to be worth more than that, um, but not on this particular day. So, you know. I remember during the auction when this item came up, the Victor 10 reproducer, we were all looking at each other in awe, shock and awe. It sold for $3,750, $3,750. Why did a Victor 10 reproducer sell for that much Well, money? and, you know, uh, for our listeners out there, you might not even know what a reproducer exactly. is. But uh, a reproducer is just one part of the phonograph uh, which holds the needle. And back in the day, they used to be interchangeable. You could buy or upgrade different reproducers. If you wanted better sound, you'd spend a little more money and and get a better reproducer. So these parts were interchangeable on phonographs. And uh, 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 the the Victor 10 is an extremely, again, a rare, rare uh, piece, and it sold for $3,700. Now, once uh, we say this all the time, these are the kind of things that we recognize when we come into your, your home or your collection and everything, and we don't sell that part on the phonograph. We would take that off and sell it separately mm-hmm. because it's worth way more on its own. Sometimes, sometimes items, sometimes your antiques are worth more in parts than they are as one item. And this is a case in point. Just one part off of a phonograph brought $3,750. We recognize that. And, and we can. that's the service we're providing for you to get you the top dollar uh, on all of your antiques that uh, you want to sell. That's right. So if you do have things like that to consign, antique phonographs, music boxes, the best way really is to send us an email at consign at donleyauctions.com. What we need to see are some photos, really. Where are you located? How many do you have? We'll call you back. We'll ask all those questions. But to get the ball rolling, just send us an email. Hey, I've got this. What do you think? And I will distribute that to our expert here, like Randy Donnelly, who will give you a call and will tell you what to do next. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, I'm always happy to take calls. Uh, You you can talk to me anytime. I'm very And we do have several calls from our listeners. So thank you, all of you out there who are Sending us emails. We're getting back to you as soon as we can. Um, if it's not fast enough and you need to make a decision even sooner, give us a call at 
nine two three seven thousand. Ask for Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, speaking of that, uh, we are planning uh, this radio show to start uh, uh, taking calls right on our show. So that's that's coming. Oh, up. Oh, I can't uh, imagine what kind of questions we're going to get. <laughs> oh boy, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Uh, again, real quick, coming up, we're going to be talking to Mike Donnelly about some gangster memorabilia. We've just received something. We'll tell you about that. I can't wait to hear more about it. Sean is coming up to talk about our real estate division. You know, that July auction is right around the corner. We're still consigning firearms. I think we're over 500 firearms so far for July. That's that's right. Well, you know, but we're always looking for more. That's that's not a, that sounds like a big number, but it's not. I mean, we've got plenty of room for more. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're always taking consignments for that. And then we're going to let you know about our upcoming auctions coming up in August, September, and October. But right now, you know what you're listening to. You're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour right here on AM560, The Answer. called auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, even veterans of vintage, and they can introduce themselves. Thanks for listening. This is the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan, co-owner of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois, here with Randy Donnelly. We're going to be telling you a little bit about some items that we've had at auction, items that are coming up in auction that are going to be valuable. And want to find out if you have anything like that in your home. So we're going to give you a little education today. On the phone right now, we have Mike Donnelly. Hi, Mike. How's it going today? Hey, great, great. I'm I'm glad you uh, came on with us today because, uh, you know, last uh, last week, Mike, we were asking for uh, gangster uh, memorabilia. We said the city of Chicago, uh, where we're here at uh, our our home base, uh, there's got to be so much stuff out there in in attics and basements and warehouses and everything and lo and behold of course we got a phone call and you and i were out on the south side and i'm I'm just looking at the list mike of what we picked up just in this one location i'm looking we we picked up an antique bar we picked up saloon doors slot machines an old funhouse mirror pinball machines um you know, uh, there there was just so much great uh, uh, gangster related or, or, and saloon related items, but I have to say the highlight was that uh, John Dillinger poster that you found. Absolutely, I mean, I was I was just couldn't believe it when I saw it. That was kind of sitting on the ground, leaning against the front of the bar, <laughs> and uh, it it is it is probably one of the most sought after gangster posters ever because this is a large size. This thing is about. Uh, uh, 16 by 20, and actually is John Dillinger, and it calls him public enemy number one. Now, that was the first time that uh, the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, came up with his most wanted and in, in, in public enemy list. So he, John Dillinger was the first public enemy number one. Uh, now, and this was – go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say one, one thing our, our listeners need to know is it's also the most widely reproduced wanted poster uh, again, for the reason being John Dillinger and public enemy number one and everything. But, uh, you know, we, we have to point out that when people are all finding these at home, uh, you know, unfortunately, in most cases, they're probably going to have reproductions. Oh, yeah, because it, this uh, poster was very short lived. Uh, he was killed less than a month later or in an ambush outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago. So this was a very short lived poster. Offering a twenty thousand dollar reward to which in nineteen thirty four was huge oh my money. God, yeah, that that's uh, right after the depression. I I mean everybody was broke. Mm-hmm, yeah. Wow. So when do you expect that to come up for auction, guys? Well, when I, yeah, gonna, when? I was, was going to go in the July auction. Our, oh, okay, uh, wonderful. Yeah, we have a. It's going to be added to all of our, our gangster memorabilia coming up in July. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, talk about, you know, the July auction. We've got some really fabulous uh, Bonnie and Clyde items. I mean, in, including actually Clyde Barrow's pistol. Uh, wow. Uh, imagine how rare that, that is and, and must be. But uh, t- talk a little bit about the Bonnie and Clyde stuff we've got. Yeah, this is all uh, – the Bonnie and Clyde stuff is one person's collection came out of uh, Bull Valley, Illinois here. 
and uh, been collected over the years, obviously, because uh, they had to put this collection together. But there, there's, besides the, uh, the the Clyde Barrow pistol, which is all documented with letters from of provenance and everything, and this follows it uh, follows it through the different hands it went through. We also have original photographs of Bonnie and Clyde here. Now you have to understand that Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, in 1933, when they really started their crime spree, they were just kids. You know, they were 19, 20 year old kids, 21 year old kids. The uh, public really didn't know much about them. There was a botched raid in 1933 in Joplin, Missouri. They were staying in an apartment, and the, the police uh, got word they were there and raided the apartment. Bonnie and Clyde got away, but they left behind all their guns and, and cameras and, and undeveloped film. And it was from these undeveloped rolls of film that they. They developed a film, and the newspapers got a hold of them and plastered these pictures all over the United States. You know, the famous ones of them holding guns on each other and Bonnie with a cigar in her mouth and such like that. So that's what built their notoriety. It was this, the the, the uh, personal photos of themselves. Wow. wow. So we have, uh, let's see, I'm looking at them right now. We have three different photos. We have uh, the, the, the flowers that uh, uh, Clyde Barrow's, uh, parents wore at his gravesite with pictures of them at the gravesite. We've got wanted posters of them. I mean, just a great collection. And the pistol, obviously, being the highlight of the Binding Clyde group. Well, I love it. Uh, Clyde actually gave this pistol to, to somebody and, and left a note with it. Roses are red, violets are blue. This gun's broke, so I leave it for you. <laughs> yeah, and signed Clyde Barrow, yeah. Oh, signed oh Clyde gosh. Barrow. I mean, what documentation? I mean, we yep. always talk on this show about provenance, but these items coming up uh, have provenance that's uh, just uh, unequaled. But, you know, besides uh, the, the Bonnie and Clyde stuff, uh, what else? I, I, well, I saw something well, coming the other day in that glass case, the Gary Cooper gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the pistol, the, the screen used pistol from the movie City Streets 1931 with Gary Cooper. And it's a 32 Colt automatic. It's all documented. It comes with a letter uh, from Lon Chaney, who was a, a silent movie star and uh, transitioned into talking pictures. Uh, he was a man of a thousand faces. You know, all the, he did all the, the monsters and mm-hmm. such during that time. But it's a letter from him. I believe it's to the director uh, uh, giving him the gun. So it's, uh, the serial number is in, in the letter and everything. So it's definitely the gun that was used in the movie. And it's used throughout the movie. It's pretty... Uh, Pretty prominent, even in the poster of of, of Gary Cooper uh, with the movie, he's holding the pistol. So that's kind of neat. And, it, and it's interesting because, of course, it's not a prop gun. It is a real Colt pistol. Um, so, uh, again, we, we all know in recent light of what's happened in the movie industry lately with uh, with firearms, how dangerous it is using real guns in the movies. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So these guns are all coming up for auction Saturday, July 15th. So that's part of our firearm auction coming up so if you have anything else to consign this is a great time to do it any other celebrity guns gangster related yeah we have uh wider vest too and 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 gambler's pistol in that in that auction too oh my gosh you know great uh uh, who's uh who's ring and uh watch it did you get get to that's uh, yeah that's uh uh pretty boy floyd that uh there was a watch and a ring and a coin found in his pocket after he was killed. And the federal agents returned that to his son, and his son kept him all the years. And we have the letters from his son and all his son's personal effects. His son, his son ended up running a saloon called Floyd's Bar and, uh, you know, living off his father's reputation and stuff. So there's wow. a little suitcase of memorabilia that comes with that, too. But, yeah. Where did that come from? Was that Chicago area? Uh, that came from the same collection out of uh, out of Bull Valley. Uh, oh, the person okay. was was heavy into outlaws and uh, and you know history like that. Wow, wow! So if anyone has anything like that, give us a call at eight one five nine two three seven thousand. Now, Mike, uh, you during your research, you also found out that the John Dillinger Museum was in Crown Point. Talk, talk about that, and we we want to find the location of those those items. It apparently was open uh, for a few years and just abruptly closed. I think it was in 2019 it closed or 2017 it closed. But nobody knows what happened to it. So somewhere out there is the John Dillinger Museum probably packed up. Uh, we'd love to hear from people. Wow. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to bring that back to the public. And, so, yeah, we're, we're putting a shout out today uh, that we're looking for the contents of the John Dillinger Museum from Crown Point, Indiana. We would love to locate these items and, and help them uh, 
uh, be realized at auction. Yep. That's right. We are still taking consignments. Like I mentioned, we would love an email from you at consign at donnellyauctions.com. Just to get the ball rolling, we'll get it, the conversation started, and we'll make you uh, make it fit in your wallet is what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Always. All right. And, um, and, and to that point, I mean, when we're looking, you know, we're talking about the John Dillinger Museum. You know, uh, Mike and I have, over, over the years, uh, helped so many museums uh, that have a storage problem. You know, so, so many times they have items consigned that they can never display again. Uh, and so they can't afford the storage. So we help liquidate for museums. So if you're a museum or a historical society that needs help liquidating, call Donnelly Auctions. That's we can right. do it. 815-923-7000. Also, coming up in the July auction, July 15th and 16th, it's firearms, ammunition on Saturday, all these celebrity guns and gangster-related items on Saturday, Sunday, military relics. Also, we just received a bunch of Civil War guns. Good. We'll talk about that in our next segment. Yeah, we can talk about that in our next one. Spencer, Sharps, Jocelyn. Oh, my gosh. All kinds of great stuff coming up in July. Mark your calendars. We do have a live auction. You can submit a phone bid, absentee bids if you want. But we'd love for you to come out to Union, Illinois, to Donley Auctions. Right now, don't go anywhere. we got more to talk about. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour right here on AM 560, The Answer. You're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan here with Randy and Mike Donnelly today. We're talking about items we're specifically looking for for an upcoming auction in November. It's our annual November Fall Classic. Tell us a little bit about some cars you're looking for, Randy. Well, you know what? Yeah, we're, we're always looking for the basics, uh, you know, vintage cars. They don't have to be antique. You know, we, of course, right, always not- doing, you know, Model T's, Model A's and everything. But uh, the vintage cars, we, we just picked up a, a 64 Buick uh, convertible I saw that. Baby yesterday. blue. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, so uh, 60s, 70s cars, uh, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, always looking for the, the great Shelby Mustangs like Mike used to drive. When <laughs> Remember that, Mike, when you were uh, uh, a, a teenager, what, you had a 68 <laughs> Shelby GT convertible. Oh, my yeah. God. What yep. a, what yep. a I'm sure car. there's some regret there ever getting rid of it. <laughs> Nah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the good days were there. But, you know, I, I was thinking about this, too. You know, uh, uh, back in the day at that same period of time, I rode a 1940 Harley. Um, and all my friends were chopping their bikes back then. I don't see any of those motorcycles coming to market. So we're always looking for motorcycles uh, of any description. And, uh, y- you know, we... You know, we need your motorcycles in any condition, whether they're original, full-dress, old Harleys, you know, pre-war especially. They really, knuckleheads bring huge money. You know what else sells really well for us, too, are low miles on Cadillacs. Those big boats of a car in the 60s and 70s Cadillacs, right? But they got to be clean with low miles. Yeah. But, Mike, uh, you know, what else for, for November? What uh, what should our listeners be talking about today uh, or calling us with? Uh, you know, one thing I, you were just talking about, the, the motorcycles, one thing you can add in there, too, is that uh, uh, what never turns up is the, the leather jackets, you know, the club jackets and oh, such yeah. like that. Those those are very, very sought after. Well, you know, you yeah, club jackets, but uh, I have to say this, uh, you know, on the air, I mean, we cannot, you know, uh, I once uh, acquired a uh, uh, a jacket and was told very quickly that you know jackets like Hell's Angels and everything they are owned by the club. The rocker on the back is owned by the club and must be returned to the club. You cannot own and display, you know, outlaws or or Hell's Angels or anything. Those are owned by the club, so. Uh, you have to be careful with with some of those items. But we do, like you say, love old motorcycle jackets and clothing and everything. You sold a bunch of it at one of our uh, auctions just a few months ago, didn't you? The, the, yeah, it was from an Elgin Motorcycle Club. <laughs> yeah. Which didn't claim the <laughs> didn't claim the rights to it. So um 
So, yes, we no, won. Because a lot, a lot of the clubs were just local organizations. They weren't national organizations. So the local clubs and such are, are, are very sought after, mm-hmm. especially if they have photo albums with them and things like that. Oh, yeah. You uh, you sold. And I was surprised at how much you sold the uh, the photo album for at auction. It went for really big money. So uh, a- a- any of the motorcycle stuff is great. but um, And racing memorabilia, too, as yeah. well. Yeah. So, uh, so, but we're always looking for coin op, right? I mean, and, yeah, and, you know, right now we've had some great pinballs come in. I mean, just this week we've had a Valley Bow and Arrow come in, a Valley Old Chicago come in, and that uh, we've already got uh, looks like six or seven machines lined up for for November already, and just pinballs. So pinballs are real hot right now. <laughs> well, we just we just noticed last night that that old Chicago pinball machine has John Dillinger on the front of it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even the on the pocket, you notice a little JD. pocket square that says JD, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the lady in red. Yeah, the, yeah uh-huh. she, and, and, she turned them in, yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, it, it all ties in together, you know, antiques of all kinds and uh, always looking Now's for. Now's the time, yeah. Yeah, and we don't know what you have at home, folks. So, you know, there's so many interesting items that you may have collected over the years. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you collected and what you found interesting. Uh, you know, Mike, you were uh, just mentioning off the air about the, uh, the the Kennedy items. We have asked for this before, but we have a great Kennedy collection coming up in November because it's the 60th anniversary of the assassination of John Kennedy. So what what kind of things would you be looking for in Kennedy, Mike? Well, you know, uh, personal, personal items mainly, things that are one of a kind. Obviously, the Life uh, magazine and, and the headlines and such like that, everybody has. But, for instance, just a couple of weeks ago, a man walked in. Uh, his uncle was the Air Force, official Air Force photographer following Kennedy at uh, when he arrived at Dallas. And uh, all his film had been confiscated by the government after the uh, assassination, but he did have a couple photographs of, of uh, the president and Mrs. Kennedy arriving at the airport, which are probably unpublished photos. So, I mean, that, wow. that'll be great interest. Yeah. Who so knows? There, there are items out there. Yeah. there. There's stuff there. I can't imagine what those are going to go for. That's going to be fun to watch. Right. The Kennedy collection coming up in November as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, 60th anniversary of the okay. assassination. So. Yeah. And the dates for that, let me look real quick. November 16th through the 18th. That's our big one. It's three days. So mark your calendars, folks. In the meantime, send us an email. Give us a call, 815-923-7000, or email us at consign at donleyauctions.com. We want to know what you have. You got any provenance with it? Are you in the area? Do we need a pickup? Can you drop it off? We'll work all that through with you when we get you on the phone. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk to Shauna next about our real estate division. And, Mike, thank you for your time. We'll see you back at the office. Take care. All right. We'll see you later. Join us after the break. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour right here on AM560, The Answer. And now, more of the Donley Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Hello, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us during that break. I'm Susan, co-owner of Donley Auctions, here with my partner, Randy Donley, and another family member, Shauna Donley, is on the phone with us today to give us an update about our new group within the company called the Donley Group, our real estate division. Hi, Shauna. Thanks for joining us again. Hi, guys. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, Shauna. It's, um, it's always nice to have you on. So, uh, you know, since... Um, since we've mentioned this, I, I just can't believe all the calls that we do get uh, for real estate. And I want uh, our listeners to know out there that our real estate division is not necessarily auctioning property. I mean, that's what somebody called me the other mm-hmm. day and said, well, do I have to sell it at auction? That wasn't really my, my plan. And I said, well, of course not. So, so Shauna, explain more. I mean, uh, just what the, um, the Donley Group does. Well, absolutely. So um, I've been in real estate now for over a decade. I can't believe I'm talking in decades at this point. But uh, the Donley Group 
The Donley Group is working with At Properties and Christie's International Real Estate. So that's where we are hanging our license. And that means we have partners in all 50 states to buy, sell, invest, and help you in whatever your real estate needs may be. I have partnered with Donley Auctions as well. So we can auction property if necessary. But in this market, the ideal goal is to always go on the market and get you the most money for your property. Um, I'm calling in today, actually, from a photo shoot from a new listing who contacted us through Donley Auctions. So that's that's where we're at. So stay tuned. We'll be listing another fantastic property here in the Chicagoland suburbs. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the, uh, the fact that uh, we can partner in 50 states because just yesterday I, in fact, uh, got a call from a gentleman that says, you know, Randy, I, I need you to help us w- with a complete antique shop. The whole shop has to be sold. I need all the the uh, uh, antiques gone out of here, sold. I need your help. And he said, but we're in Wisconsin. Can you help us with the real estate too? And, uh, and again, he wasn't talking about auctioning the real estate. He needed it listed. And I said, well, uh, of course, uh, Wisconsin. We're in uh, Wisconsin all the time. Exactly. And we are. Um, just last week, I had stopped by our at Properties Lake Geneva office and, you know, able to work from pretty much anywhere. And that's, that's the most exciting part about this new move to app properties. Uh, but I am personally licensed in Wisconsin as well. So when you're calling us, more than likely, I'll be the one handling your property, your listing, your buying needs up there as well. Great. Great. We also have information on our website at Donley Auctions with an S, dot com. There's a tab there for the Donley Group. That'll give you more information of what you need to do to take your next steps as well. So, exactly. Just click on real estate and you get my cell phone number. You can call me directly. So tell us again about that, that really neat property you have in Chicago. Is that still for sale? Yes, absolutely. It's, it is still for sale. Uh, we're still on the private network right now, but it's a beautiful coach house right in the heart of the Gold Coast. A coach so house. That's right. Wow. I, uh, it just sounded yes. so intriguing to me. I don't know. A coach it house is. in Chicago. And you walk in and it's it's just magical. You walk back through this beautiful courtyard and you've got tall trees that are basically in your front yard. It's so quiet. You've got two bedroom, two and a half bathroom. This house is so unique. It even has a little buzzer where you have a fake wall that opens up right out to the alley out of your powder room. Get <laughs> out of here. How <laughs> neat is that? Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's like right out of the movies and, and you can have it this is. right in the city of Chicago. What what a perfect space, you know. So to right. find and out, there's well, really only, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was it going to say, so if they need to get more information on that, they can call you direct, Shauna, from our website. They can call us directly, or if you click on the real estate tab, it will take you to my real estate page, and all the information on all the properties that we have listed is right there at the bottom. Wonderful. So Fabulous. you can see photos, have a virtual tour, and contact me for a showing. And uh, the the Brookfield property, uh, we're actually going to be doing a complete sale uh, right at the the property. We will be, yep. So, um, again, give us a call for more details to come on that one. Um, but how exciting. It's a multi-unit property right in the heart of Brookfield, just off of Ogden Avenue, also on our website. But we just received an offer last night for 10% over asking. Wow. So if mm-hmm. anybody is thinking that the market has slowed down, it absolutely hasn't. It's an excellent time to sell. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because so many people say to me, well, oh, I don't want to sell now because the real estate uh, or the uh, interest rates are too high. But that you said that hasn't really affected things. It really hasn't. So what we're looking at now is when rates do end up dropping and in my opinion and the lenders that I've spoken with, it's kind of inevitable at some point. Um, people will be refinancing and prices are going to go up. So if you're a buyer, it's a great time too because we're kind of right in the middle of this market where it's, we're just kind of teeter-tottering here. So it's a great time to sell and a great time to buy. Well, and I'll always be one to say, you know, the the, the interest rates really aren't that high. When I financed the Wild West town uh, back in the 70s, interest rates were 17%, thank you. Um, but speaking of Wild Careful West Town, there. you're going to give every realtor a heart attack right now who's listening in. <laughs> I, uh, that was uh, back then. I want to remind everyone, too, that we do have the old Wild West Town property up for sale, uh, which is uh, 24 commercial acres right in the heart of McHenry County. That's right. Where can they get That's more right. information on that? Probably at our website. Wouldn't All you right. say, Sean? 
We'll get it on there if it's yes, not yet, absolutely. but we'll get some information on there as well. Wild West Town is for sale, folks. Spread the word. So coming up next in our next, we got one more episode to go. Yeah, of course. So we're going to talk a little bit about some upcoming auctions. We want to remind everyone where to go to ask us any questions, the phone number, email, and how you can bid at an auction. But now's the time to consign. So we want to be very specific on some items we're looking for. So the other day we got an email about Tiffany Lamps. Can't wait to tell you about that one. You had something to add? Yeah, I wanted to see if Shauna could hang in for the next uh, oh, segment, too. Yeah, Shauna, stick with you, us. You got just a minute, Shauna? Sure, why not? All right, Great. thank Always you, Shauna. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour here every Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560, The Answer. The Donley Auctions Hour continues now on AM 560, The Answer. We are back with the Donley Auctions Hour talking with Shauna Donnelly about the new real estate division of Donnelly Auctions called the Donnelly Group. Hi, Shauna. Thanks for sticking with us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, Shauna. I I just wanted to mention one more time, uh, not that we're pushing the sale by any means of the the Wild West Town, but, you know, it's such a a great event center, whether people are using it uh, as a, a banquet hall or just any type of events. I mean, it's 24 acres. It's all zoned. Uh, commercial property, and liquor zoning. So you can have concerts on this property. I would love so to on. see a country uh, festival. You know, hint, uh, hint, anyone th- out there. There's almost 60,000 square foot of buildings on, on this property. It's, mm-hmm. it's really uh, a quite a quite Look a at thing. all those details on our website, too, so that you can share that with uh, other interested parties as well. Shauna, sure. anything else to add? Um, you know, just uh, that the real estate market is hot, even... Even more commercial. And one of the best things about our Wild West Town property is being zoned commercial in McHenry County, where we're not seeing much more zoning coming out like that. So it's a rarity. It's it, something that a buyer could really get their hands on and just step right into a fully functioning business. It, it really is. It really is amazing. Thank you, Shauna. We'll Thank love, you, Shauna. We'll, we'll see you uh, back at the office today. And, Absolutely. Uh, Thanks for having me, guys. Okay. Uh, Susan, what did you want to mention about uh, Tiffany Lamps? Oh, I got a call, an email with some photos of some, I've got some Tiffany Lamps. Great. Oh, my gosh. We were on that immediately, weren't we? Well, and we when were, we looked at the photos, yeah. and, and, and I, what we found. It's, um, it's amazing that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we sometimes have to give you the bad news. Uh, well, of what we're you, very honest with of, what, of what you have. Uh, yes, we we did have uh, photos of of Tiffany lamps, and yes, they are Tiffany style, uh, but unfortunately, they were probably purchased at one of these uh, Tiffany lamp shops that used to spring up in the malls, you know. And right. uh, and they're they're nice reproductions, and they're good, beautiful, good for but, home decor. But realistically, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, maybe at, right. at auction. So they're not going to bring a lot. Whereas, truly, a good. Tiffany lamp today that is a signed original Tiffany, which we can certainly recognize for you and tell you the difference, is, is going to go $50,000. I mean, a cheap Big Tiffany lamp yeah. today would be 25000 but, you know, 50000 and there are Tiffany lamps, Susan, that bring a million dollars. Wow. That, that is wow. absolutely Does anyone have one of those? No Let us know. <laughs> they, well, they turn up. They Most do. people don't know because they've been handed down over the years. They end up in attics. They mm-hmm. end up in crawl spaces, you know, where at some point in time, people weren't interested in having it in their house. That's right. And it we just, just sold some Tiffany items at the auction last week, the Tiffany desk oh, set. Oh, my goodness. We were going to start it as one lot. Instead, we broke it into pieces. We broke it into pieces. Not the, the actual... Be- <laughs> We no, didn't break no, no, no. it. <laughs> we separated it. We sold That's it as to use. different yeah. components. <laughs> yes. We did not break it. And, uh, uh, but that Tiffany desk set ended selling uh, for yeah, just about $8,500. $8, yeah. Total. Right. Right. It was, mm-hmm. it was beautiful, too. So those are the kinds of things we're looking for. Send us the pictures. You never know. We were looking for the Tiffany stamp, hoping for that big win that just wasn't on there. On those Still lamps, beautiful yeah. items. Mm-hmm. And we, we're going to give the customer next steps on those as well. Sure. So the emails are coming in. Email us at consign, C-O-N-S-I-G-N, consign at donleyauctions.com. Let us know where you're at, what you have. We'll take it from there. Also, you know, come out to our auction in July, July 15th and 16th, firearms, ammunition, and military. We would love for you to come out. We offer complimentary food and drinks, 
it's just a great event, isn't it, it Randy? Really we is. love everybody coming out to our auctions. And you we can love live. meeting you live. That's Absolutely. right. You can submit some absentee bids, some phone bids, but come out to Donnelly Auctions. Give us a call, 815-923-7000. We're on Do- the Donnelly Auctions Hour, AM 560. I'm Susan. And I'm Randy Donnelly. And, and we'll, we'll see you at, at the auction. auction. Thanks for listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Check out all the latest information on upcoming auctions and collectibles at DonnellyAuctions.com. And while you're there, you can contact someone about buying or selling your collectibles or estates. That's DonnellyAuctions.com.